Welcome everyone to this Force Friday. Uh, today we are going to dig a little bit more into the psychology behind perfectionism versus uh, drawing, but we're going to share with you drawing skills and experiences that potentially can help you use, that you can use to um, help your way out of it or learn how to work with it, right? I would say both of those. Um, so before we get started, uh, let's just say hello to other force instructors. Uh, how are you doing, Mr. Swenley? Good. Looking forward to this discussion. I think it's such a big part, you know, and it has such a like huge impact. It's more than just the technical skills. So yeah, I hope we give some interesting insights uh, during this live stream. Yeah, I think this is a big. This is a big one. You know, it's a really big one. You know, some of you out there are going to watch today and go, you know, I don't even know what you're talking about. Like, I don't, I don't suffer from any of these things. And that's great. So you're lucky, you know, it's great. But I would say the vast majority of artists, uh, I would even say over 80%, uh, at least in some point in time, are going to come across what we're talking about today. And it's going to affect their work. It's going to affect the speed with which they could learn. Um, and we're here to try to have a conversation about it today. So we're going to be looking for a lot of feedback from you guys in the chat today. Most of today is going to be conversation. Um, and then Murtunjay at the end is going to do some demoing for us also to show how to, how to work through this. So, and with that, how are you doing Murtunjay? Uh, I'm doing good guys. It's, uh, it's been a great topic because yeah, everybody worries about perfection and <laughs> we'll try to clarify today is like, Oh, would you, should you go for it? You should not go for it, or, or how do you approach it? Doesn't make general. So yeah, I mean, uh, just to kind of give you a good, uh, like a good uh, segue is like, yeah, I mean, perfection. You're not doing uh, always the art for perfection, I guess. No? So <laughs> there are more meanings to it. So I guess we're gonna clear it out today. Yeah, exactly. All right, so I'm gonna, um, well, actually we're gonna start up with uh, sort of a group conversation, right? And like I said, you guys out there that are here with us today, um, first of all, welcome and thank you for joining us as always. And uh, I always forget to do this, but um, you know, if you like what we're doing here on this channel, then please do hit the subscribe button, right? Share it with your friends and or family if they're interested in drawing and uh, hit the notify, um, you know, bell right so this way you don't have to worry about missing any of the uh, content that we're putting up there will be more and more content coming up uh soon i finally set up an area in my studio so i'm hoping to do even very random like live sessions uh, i will be working on that probably next couple of weeks i would say um, i have a busy week coming up so maybe like two weeks out from now i want to start doing that so the notify bell is great for that right if all of a sudden i just like pop up one afternoon because i'm like oh, i got time to draw for 20 minutes you'll get notified okay so it has even more meaning now uh right so let's see um perfection in art uh first of all i found this kind of funny i was saying this one before we came on um and this is obviously the statue of david by michelangelo and it's supposed to be about the story of david and goliath and I don't, maybe one of you knows, I can't recall if this is supposed to be before or after he smites uh, Goliath, but it's interesting that he's got concern on his face. So um, I imagine that this is the before, right? The before moment. Um, so just kind of tied in ironically with- um, it's before, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it seems like it's the before. Um, it ties in perfectly with what we're talking about, which is just the idea of concern, you know? constant concern and worry or anxiety. And we don't want to, I don't want you to have to deal with those things when you're working. You know, as, as I was putting this together um, for today's session, I realized a lot of the stuff we're going to talk about today is not, it's not like perfectionism is bad. It's more about the individual and how you're affected by these things. So I want you to be aware of that. And I'll kind of try to remind us of this as we go throughout the session. Um, it's bad when it's bad. <laughs> it's bad when it stops you. You know, you don't want it to stop you, right? Uh, you don't want to have yourself go into negative emotions if what that does, like it says, it prohibits you to move forward. And that's really the conversation of today. What you want to try to do is keep moving forward, keep learning and so on, right? 
So what is perfection, right? Very simply put, I'm being sort of very practical here. There's patterns to working, right? And the first pattern is, um, is in learning, right? And the ability to learn. You usually like challenge yourself, right? It could be, hey, I'm gonna sit down and do this figure drawing, right? That's your challenge. You might say, I might even do it in five minutes. That's your challenge. Uh, and then you might fail at it. Something goes wrong and you learn from that failure. You look at it and go, okay, what did I do wrong, right? Okay, I did this, this, and this. I'm going to improve it. And then you go back to step one again, right? And you go through this cycle, right? And that cycle is what helps you get better, right? You just go through this process. When someone sets themselves up for perfection, the first red flag is that the goal that you set up is unrealistic. This next drawing I do is going to show up in the Louvre, <laughs> right? Like it's going to be that amazing. It's going to be the best drawing I ever did. Oh, bad news, <laughs> right? Like immediately that's a stressor or not, right? And this is what I was saying before. Maybe that's how you motivate yourself. And that's fine. Like I used to do this. Uh, I used to, I got really good at being thick skinned. So I'd be like, this is one's going to be really freaking awesome. It's going to be the best thing I ever did. And you're drawing, it's like, oh my God, it sucks, right? That's fine. I'm going to do it again. But that's not what most people do. Most artists are not thick skinned enough to go through that process. Instead, it'd be, it's going to be great. I learned all these new tactics or whatever. I'm going to make this amazing drawing. They go out and try to do it. And they fall on their face and they're devastated, right? They're crushed by that. And then they obsess. So you can see they fail. They then either obsess over that failure and the things that are wrong about that drawing. Or even worse, the worst thing that can happen is they go into avoidance, right? And they basically then finally avoid the situation. They avoid wanting to draw. They avoid their artwork. They avoid their dream of becoming a professional artist or becoming, uh, you know, um, an amazing hobbyist, whatever your goal might be, right? Either way, they kill that, right? And that comes out of typically unreal expectations, right? Goals are expectations. I hear that a lot, by the way. I'm, I'm very aware when I'm mentoring, I listen to what people say to me very closely. There's lots of like shoulds that come up, right? Well, you know, I'm really disappointed about this week's work because I should have gotten this by now, right? So there's like this false uh, goal, this false expectation that then creates them to either obsess or to want to avoid doing the work, right? Some people that have even um, like ADHD or OCD, uh, you got to know what your expectations then are. What are the goals for you, you know, with a situation like that, that are accomplishable? You know, how do you break that down into smaller chunks that are uh, an amount of work that you think you can take on, right? And having the clarity around that. So very, very important here to be aware of what is your, what's your setup in the first place? How are you coming in? How are you entering the conversation with yourself, your internal dialogue about the work and what you're going to do about that work, right? What are you trying to accomplish, right? And then you want a healthy challenge. I think that's also very important is setting up that goal in a, in a, in a proper way. Uh, meaning maybe it's like, you know, I just want to try to learn something out of this next drawing, right? And maybe you won't, but at least you're going to try to push yourself to find something new in it, right? It's not going to happen every time either, right? Okay, um, you guys have anything you want to add to that? Well, I've also seen students uh, get to the opposite extreme of perfectionism, meaning that they are so perfectionist that they just cannot stop. You know, like they have to keep going until the drawing is absolutely perfect, you know, and then it becomes this never ending iteration cycle, which is also on the negative extreme. You know, at a certain point, you just have to let it go and move on. Yeah, that's that obsessiveness, right? So if they don't yeah. avoid, you can go into the obsession of going down a rabbit hole. And sometimes you need to know when to stop that digging. <laughs> you know, like this isn't getting any better because you're obsessed within this like tight tunnel. And because of that, you can't really find the answer. You know, you're not really looking wide enough. You're going deep, but not wide. 
to get a solution. Mm-hmm. So sometimes you got to go wide to find the answer versus digging down. And I think part of the trick of learning is, you know, understanding when to do either one of those. When do you go wide? When do you dig down? All right. And that, that comes with experience and time. And, you know, something like force mentorship, right? With, when we teach you guys one on one, you know, we've had the time and experience and the failures to understand like, oh, you know what, you should dig deeper here or you should not dig deeper. You need to go wide, right? You need to iterate more instead, right? Uh, let's see, I'm just looking here at the writing. Um, Samantha said, I got pissed at my drawings one day and felt pleasure in crumbling every drawing up and throwing them on the floor. The next day I sat down and everything was flowing great. Uh, that's why I keep doing this. <laughs> yeah. I've definitely drawn at times out of like anger and frustration. I'll never forget. I did a, um, I did a workshop at San Jose state. This is probably going back about 10 years. And I just hated the drawing I was doing. And I was like, son of a, you know, and I was like sitting there and like violently attacking a piece of paper. And I remember stopping and then looking back and all the students were staring at me aghast, you know, with their eyes wide open, their mouths open. And I'm like, what? Like, this was great. I'm going through my own therapy here, <laughs> right? And it doesn't matter because just me and my drawing, I'm not hurting the model. I'm not bringing you guys. Like, I'm just like taking it out amongst myself, right? Which is kind of cool because the drawing is like an external thing that you could deal with instead of you just like ruminating in your head about all these things that are frustrating you, right? Like, you get it out. Uh, so, you know, it's a great therapy tool, quite honestly, right? So I love the idea of, hey, it's fine. Crumple up your drawings, throw them out, burn them, do whatever you want to do, right? And just move on, right? It's all good. It's all very good. Okay, so like I said, you know, be aware of your goals in the, in the front end. If you catch yourself assessing and going down a tunnel, watch out for that. And uh, especially watch out if you kick into avoidance, right? That is a huge red flag. Right. If you're setting if you're setting yourself up into avoidance and you know something's going on with you about you're either too afraid, you know, you're scared, you're really disappointed. Right. And that typically comes out of um, just having goals that are unrealistic. Right. OK. All right. Really, really good subject there. So talking about the goals. Typically, what happens is the misplacement of the goal is more on the end result. Right. Especially, I'm, I'm focusing here in a little bit more on learning, okay? So students come in and their goal is, I have to make a great drawing. I have to create a great illustration, a great image. And that's not where the learning is. The learning is not at that end. The learning is the entire uh, process, right? It's the journey. Like that is, you know, the hour it takes, let's say, to draw something is where the work is, not the millisecond it takes to take a look at it and go, okay, well, this is what I got to. Here's the end. It's over, right? It's over already, right? So it's in that journey that you want to find the learning, right? Not get to the end goal. Uh, And the irony I wrote here is the less you know, the more you focus on the end result. So newcomers, right? Uh, Beginning art art students, they have a habit of pushing that much more focused on the end result of saying, I'm just going to sit here and make this drawing great, or I want to make it look exactly like what the image is, right? I have to make this look perfect. Uh, And they just focus on that versus like an understanding of how to draw in the first place, right? So uh, like I said, I, I found over my years of teaching that the irony is the less a student knows, the more they actually even focus on that problem versus trying to learn how to draw. So kind of weird that there's this real dialectical clear um, imbalance that happens between those two positions, right? It's the pros or someone that has more experience or someone that's experienced in something else. Like I have quite a few students that'll come in that are, let's say, great at um, a musical instrument. If they are, then they know what it took to get there. You know, it takes work and it takes time. And it's those hours that you put in doing the work that actually make things better, right? Not trying to focus on, I'm going to all of a sudden, you know, play play like, uh, you know, one of the world's top uh, pianists, right? So make sure you focus on the present moment and the learning itself, not on that end picture, right? Let's see. I get stressed at times. Redacted says, I get stressed at times because my drawings at startup come out bad. Yeah. Well, first of all, 
notice, always notice how you're talking and thinking, right? So redacted started with, you know, because my drawings at startup come out bad, right? Try to really be mindful of how you talk to yourself and what you say, right? So bad is obviously the judgment there. I would recommend to focus a little bit more on um, your language, you know, how you describe those things. We're going to dig into this a little further later, but I would say watch for that. And when we're all guilty of this, not just redacted, right? I, I mean, I, I, these are things I know and I still catch myself doing them. And what Tim says, fine, failing, not getting her straight away. Exactly. Counter pasta. Something I've been thinking about with perfection and being messy is that you need something to push against in order to improve. Yeah, I think you need a starting point, right? Even just throwing up on the darn piece of paper and getting to start your work, right, is good instead of coming in and trying to get that first line to be the best line and the most perfect line, for instance, right? Eduardo says, and how to fail and not charge yourself a thousand times and refocus on developing the action. If everything looked so nice, there would be no work to do. <laughs> That's very true. Instead of practice making perfect, it's practice makes permanence. Yeah, I would say that's right. Practice creates skill, right? Practice creates skill, I think is like a very simple way of looking at it. Uh, Eduardo says my compliance, compli I'm not, compliance maybe, for me is this to return to focus is complicated. We'll talk about that also, Eduardo, but that's a very good point. So let's keep moving forward. So again, the beginner, their goal, going back to goals, is generally to copy, right? So the irony is to copy. And that, again, ironically, is a great space to create concern. Because if you're just trying to make a photographic like Xerox copy of the image you're creating, it's much easier to judge, right? Because there's the photograph, right? So does it look like the photo or does it not, right? And anyone, you know, your grandma can walk in and say, well, that doesn't look like the photo. <laughs> the eyebrow's off and you may have missed it, right? But somebody else can come in and look at it, especially faces, right? So most beginners start off with like, what? Copies of people's faces, right? Faces are probably the thing that we are the most stringent on as human beings because we're used to looking at each other's faces. So we're very, very uh, sensitive to looking at faces and the accuracy of faces, reading expressions on faces. That's number one, it's the face. And then number two, it's because it's a copy, right? So what are you really getting out of that? Well, you, you learn to see, and, and as I've said, and I will say forever, I think it's really important to be able to see clearly. I think it's there's value in being able to copy. I think there is value in that. You know, I think most of us started there right? But that's not going to teach you how to draw, right? That's not going to, you know, that's not drawing, it's copying. And it's usually just light and shading, rendering. You might sketch out some shapes and then like render, 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 right? So, and to me, rendering and drawing are two different things. We'll talk about that a little further today as well. So my recommendation is if you're somebody starting off, don't start with copying people's faces, you know? That's kind of a minefield, you know? Um, let's see, instead of practicing, I don't like applying and practice. Lack of patience is the biggest problem from my point of view. We aim for a perfect drawing from the start. We create urgency in our brain and we take hasty and wrong decisions while drawing. That's from artist said. Yeah, we're going to talk more about that subject today as well. Charles says, I've been drawing the worst faces and heads lately. <laughs> Notice again the judgments, right? The worst, the worst faces and heads. <laughs> So watch your guys' language, right? Especially since you're typing. Take a look at what you're typing before you post it. See if you're gonna even adjust it for yourself to come from a more um, objective uh, standpoint versus subjective, right? Okay, so like I said, it's easy to judge because we can look at the photo. And it's usually your ego then, it's getting in the way, right? The ego over the copy leads to the stress and the judgment, right? Oh my God, the eyeball's off. This one's too big, that one's too small. The eyebrows aren't working, the eyeball's off, the mouth's not right. The tone over here is not right, blah, blah, blah. My drawing sucks. I suck the end into avoidance, <laughs> right? It happens that fast, okay? We can, uh, we can easily replace the word copy with study, and that would make a lot of difference, I guess, you know? Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, and we're going to get to that. Like, how do, we, how do we get out of these problems, right? Most definitely. It's that copying that 
causes a problem. Machines are better at that than humans. You want to copy, like take a picture, <laughs> you'll have a direct copy. There'll be nothing wrong with it. Take a photograph, right? Okay. If you think about the copying thing, uh, you just say, oh, okay, I have to create a copy. That That's what the thing is. So, that's you know, right. it's like replacing the word, like makes it a, makes it a lot of difference, you know? Yeah, that's a great point. At least then you're talking about earlier, you're setting up the expectation of my goal here is to make a copy. And I'm aware that that's a challenging thing to do. You know, am I going to get this 100% right? Maybe not. Maybe it'll be 80% or 90% right. But again, set up clear expectation for yourself, you know, and be aware of what you're trying to do. Not easy to make a direct copy, you know, right. not bad as a skill, but not easy either. And again, it's that the beginner tries to go there. It's one of the hardest things to do actually, right? And that's where the beginner goes. So it's like, you know, it's like moths to a flame, <laughs> right? And all the beginners are just going right into the fire, right? So watch out for that. So um, ironically, uh, I have a new student named Scarlett that I uh, just started teaching uh, last week. And this was from our first session. Usually in mentorship in the first session, I asked the student to bring in their current work, right? So Scarlett brought in these two images. Uh, one I remember was a family member. This is obviously from a photo of these two dancers. Guess what she's doing, <laughs> All right? She's copying. Right, so we had a big conversation about that. And she was aware of that. That's why she came to me. Uh, to her credit, she knew she spent many years doing this and understands this isn't really knowing how to draw, right? This is learning how to copy, right? So today, this morning, in fact, we had our first session after her doing her homework assignment. And already, you know, big change, right? Because now she's drawing to learn. You know, it's like now we're looking at, let's say she had some dancers. We're not looking at these dancers to make rendered copies. We're looking at the dancers to study them, to understand where their forces are. How do they work? How does gravity come into play, right? It's a whole other shift, right? Totally different mindset from I'm trying to just copy this photograph, right? That, that is, that's a massive, to me, that is massive. That is a massive change for somebody to make that shift as an artist, right? Uh, one of the best things about journal, uh, journaling, yeah, seeing your internal dialogue, yes, visually. I think writing in general, writing on your drawings, writing in a journal um, gives you the chance to see what your internal conversation is. That's a good first step before you get good at recognizing your internal conversation in your brain, which is moving a lot faster and stepping in, you know, that you want to try to, over time, you're trying to create a buffer for yourself to step in and go, ah, oh, wait a minute, that's not the right word I should use here, right? I should use this instead. I'm being judgmental again, right? Redacted says, when you mean referencing, does that mean not to literally get the exact same thing on the photo, but just take the segments from the said photo for reference and change from some stuff? Um, it's more redacted to like what Mertunje was saying. Um, I forget how you put it, Mertunje. Well, you, you talk, oh yeah, I remember now. The idea of the word reference means you're referring to, right? It's yeah. not like yeah. we call reference our copy. <laughs> Here's the copy I'm going to copy. Instead, it's a reference, I'm going to refer to it, right? Now you can refer and be exacting. And in force, by the way, force, I, I wanna be real clear about this. It's not that force is not exacting, okay? It can be exacting. We can get you to draw exactly what you see. And there's this fine line between the copying and the studying there, right? Because in a sense you're copying because you're trying to get the exact angle, the exact thickness, the exact force but it's not purely through this sort of more mindlessness of i'm just going to look and make a copy of something i'm drawing it through the act of learning and studying it again that word study um to get that precision right but i'm studying to get that precision not just copying like my brain is not on like copy this copy this copy this it's what's going on inside your head that really matters right Don says, after years of working, I've learned that the more time I spend on the original design and big picture, the less stress I have at the end of the project because of my confidence, my ability. Yes, most definitely. All the hard work should happen at the front and it should get easier as you go. It's a pyramid, right? Uh, Thomas is here. Hey, Thomas. Um, I always try to figure out the why instead of the blanket of ideas of I'm trying to draw bad. It helps me specify my goals and narrow down what I'm trying to learn from a study. I also think iteration helps. Yeah, that's a great point, right? Like the why. Why am I doing this, right? Why does the model look like this? Why are they able to stand, right? It, it, 
why is a bigger question, right? At least there is a question, right? In copying, there is no question. There's no thought. It's just like, this looks like this. I have to make it look like this. This looks like this. I have to make it look like this. So Thomas's idea of bringing the why opens up, you know, the can of whoop ass that we want to have open, which is like, I need to figure out what's going on, right? Busy Cheen, copying tends to be more 2D viewing of an image as something to be transferred. Yes, where studying tends to be figuring out why something looks like that. Yes, that's exactly right. Yeah, so why I think is a very good winner in this conversation, most definitely. Now, last but not least, before we move on to the next uh, step here, next phase, um, this is another student that's at drawingforce.com. I think I've shown this uh, a while back also. Believe it or not, this is the same student's work. Okay, so on the left is a rendering that took many, many hours, decades of hours, right? Like 30, 40, I forget, it was 40, between 40 and 60 hours, I could swear, or some in there, somewhere in that space. And then this is a drawing, a line drawing done by the same student, right? So go figure, right? It just shows you the discrepancy in skill, okay, of real like drafting skill between I can render right? I can render something, especially if I have the time, I could sit and copy it, right? And get all those gradations and tones and get the shapes and just do the measuring to get to that kind of image versus how well do I know how to draw, right? How do I know the skills it takes to actually become a, a, a drawer? And I can promise you the faster this person knows how to draw, the better they know how to draw, the faster the rendering will happen later as well, right? Because now you are looking through the why, right? Like you understand why things look the way they do, right? So this one always blows my mind, just the, man, the, the contrast, right? The contrast between these two. Anything you guys want to add, don't let me run this whole show. If you guys, you know, jump in whenever you want or in as an image you want me to go to or whatever. Um, yeah, I mean, about this one, it's interesting that, uh, especially if you want to enter the creative industry, if all you can do is copy, what are you going to do when you don't have anything in front of you? You know, you need to bring understanding to the table to be able to to create you know and invent your own stuff so it's I think it's very important to be aware of uh when you study the reference you want to walk away with you want to like extract enough information from the reference that you can apply to your own work later on you know and if you're not really analyzing and thinking and, and understanding then you walk away with nothing you have a nice copy but what did you learn? Yeah, it goes back to that referral thing, I think, with Mutunje's play on words there, right? It's like, when you're a pro, you don't want to get stuck on relying on copying. It'll take you forever to get something done, right? You, you need to know how to look at reference and refer to it and grab what you need from it, right? And bring it into your artwork. Copying will take you forever. You know, you'll be out of a job within a couple of weeks. I can promise you that because the guy next to you is going to be working 15 times faster than you are, right? So it just doesn't, it doesn't work. It's kind of unrealistic. This idea of rendering at this pace, the only space this works in, honestly, is if you're a hobbyist or you're like a fine artist and you're making, you know, $20,000 a painting because this is going to take you that long to be able to pay your bills, <laughs> Right. To, to have the luxury of time, you know, to do this or, you know, whatever you're retired and you can sit and you can afford to do this, you know, then more power to you and then go sit and copy the model, you know, but this is not how most of the world really works. Now, again, as I said before, it's not like copying is bad. There's good things about it. It's good for your eye to get that sharp, you know, to see things that well. But as you guys said, even in the chat, you know, it's just like this two-dimensional idea of like, I observe this and I copy this and I do this. I mean, you know, I, I used to have a school called Entertainment Art Academy. And I remember we used to have kids like nine, 10 years old, we teach them the grid process and be like, hey, take a photograph, grid it out, bring the grid to a piece of paper. And, and they could do this, right? You can get a, a nine-year-old to do this, believe it or not, especially with the grid process. That's just a way of copying in smaller chunks, right? So you keep the accuracy up, but they could do it. Right. So I think anyone can learn how to copy, you know, and one of you in the chat talked about patience and, and you need patience to do so. But it is such a quick dead end. That's the issue. It's a very fast dead end. You know, there's there's way more to learn about art behind that wall. Right. That's where all the work is. A year's worth of learning is behind that wall of the copy, which is just sitting here like this. Right. You don't want to stop there. 
And that new student of mine, Scarlett, right, she's stuck here. So now I'm like, boom, we need to push through this and explore everything that's going on back here, right? Okay, let's see, back to Photoshop. <clears throat> so what is it that we want, right? What is the goal then, right? We've been talking about what not to do, what not to do, what not to do. What we want to do is we want to have the freedom, right? Freedom. I love the word freedom, man. <laughs> I got to tell you, it's one of my favorite words in the English language, right? Freedom. The freedom to learn and to explore and to discover, right? And that's the mindset we want to get you into. And perfectionism typically is the opposite. It is a prison cell, right? It's a prison cell of stress and anxiety. Is it always and for everyone? No. Some people can push, I want to be perfect and have thick enough skin to know it's okay. They're also great at falling on their face and they can brush themselves off and get up, right? But a true perfectionist will be obsessive or go into avoidance, right? So you really, like I said, those are the red flags you really wanna watch out for if you see yourself doing that. You wanna to get to a place of freedom to learn, explore and discover, right? So how do we get there, right? How do we get there? Let's start talking about solutions. Let's see how we're doing on time here too, okay. So the first thing is self-awareness. I've been hinting at this um, since we started today's conversation. One of the ways is your internal dialogue, right? Some of you have been writing here today and been trying to call you out a little bit on, eh, watch your judgments, right? Don't be so hard on yourself. Unless you're okay with it, unless you're okay with it and it motivates you, go for it. Be as judgmental as you want on yourself. But most people don't work that way. Most people crumble under judgment, right? So again, be aware. You know, one of the things I learned very early on in my teaching career was I really had to learn the psychology of all 25 students in the class. And one of the main things I would try to notice was, is this student more motivated by me being negative towards them or are they more motivated by me being positive towards them, right? So figure out what makes you tick. You know, if you say to yourself, God, I suck today and that makes you work harder, then go ahead. If that hurts you, you know, you're like, I suck today. Oh my God, I, you know, forget it. I'm just going to watch TV or play video games all today. That's not working, right? So be aware of how you tick, right? Self-awareness, man, is probably one of the most powerful tools on the planet, right? It's for you to be aware of what makes you tick. How do you work? What are you thinking about? What are you not thinking about? What do you need to think about, right? How do you need to think about it? The why is because the person who's running the show is you, right? So if there's anyone you should really invest in is yourself and be aware of what's going on, okay? So self-awareness, huge, huge, huge. And again, I would add to this internal dialogue. And we talked about the idea of journaling. You guys already brought that up. I think journaling gets that internal, external. It really gives you a chance to see it and assess it, change it, try to change your brain, right? Get to a better place and then move forward, right? I think here is, is where comparison also comes into play, like comparing yourself to, to other people, you know, and then comes the expectations again, like I should be able to do this, you know, and if you look at a pro that has been drawing for like 30 years and you're just starting out, then it's unfair to compare yourself, you know, and even if you have been drawing for 30 years, I mean, you're still a different individual. So the best comparison that you can do is with yourself, like, where was I? A while back and where am I at now you know and I think nowadays with social media you get bombarded with lost wa waves and waves of amazing artwork so it's very easy to uh be judgmental and you know drive yourself into depression and not want to draw anymore so yeah. it's something to to watch out uh to watch out for yeah I would just I would... go ahead Martin Jake Sorry, I was just saying, uh, especially after AI art thing, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so carry yourself to the AI. <laughs> <laughs> that damn machine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I would uh, add. I would just add to this real quick. Sometimes it's not bad. I'm here to play devil's advocate to our own conversation. If you're someone who's really competitive and you're healthy at that, you know, you're good at it, and go. You know, damn, look at that comic book artist. He's amazing and I suck. I want to get that good. And that drives you. Go for it. That's fine. You know, if some people have more of a competitive spirit and some don't. Typically, again, this is very broad brush stroke, but typically artists don't lean on being competitive. They're usually more introverted, you know, more say, you know, more guarded, 
not like rah rah let's go kill the other football team <laughs> right it's not usually the mindset some artists are athletes and they go into art and that's fine then you maybe get that space a little bit more you know but not usually. So if you are a more rare artist that likes the competition and that gets you going, you know, you're like, damn that guy, I can't believe how good that art is. I want to be that good. Use it, like go ahead. But most are not. Usually it's like, oh my God, I'll never get there. How are they doing that? You know, I can never get to that, that amazing art, you know, skill. So forget it, throw in the towel, <laughs> All right? Game over. <laughs> So again, just be aware, self-awareness, right? Self-awareness, super important. You know, this whole conversation today, it can go like, it's either, you know, you're on one end or on the other end. And, you know, and human beings are not black and white. We're, you know, we're gray, right? So you might be sometimes leaning one way and sometimes leaning another. So it's a tricky conversation because there is a broad spectrum of what's right and what's wrong for each one of us. The main thing is you want to have the ability to keep moving forward, right? You want to keep moving forward, right? Okay, so self-awareness, pretty big deal. Curiosity and awe, right? So because self-awareness is such a big deal, um, what we want to try to do is you want to get in your own head, right? You want to get in your head. One way of getting in your head is to learn to have curiosity and to have a sense of awe over your subject, right? That inspires, that inspires you. Like we just said, judgment or com comparison could be an inspiration, right? You could go through an awe moment on somebody else's work and go, that's amazing. I can't believe it. I need to do it better or as good as, or that's amazing. I'm going to never become an artist, <laughs> right? So you might look at a reference, right? Maybe you're walking around one day and you see this beautiful flower, right? And you're like, oh my God, that's amazing. I have to see... If I can capture that, right? I want to capture how it affected me and create this in a way that will affect others, right? And that's your motivation. That's your why, right? So, you know, again, keep in mind that it's whatever works for you. We're just trying to give you tools, these very big, broad tools as what works for us, right? And what we try and teach. Curiosity and awe is definitely a huge component. And copying doesn't really fit in here so much, you know? When you're copying, usually it's a very monotonous task, I have to say. The, the, the process of going through the copying isn't typically very fulfilling. Usually the end is, it's like, wow, look at the copy I made. It looks exactly like that flower. But going through the process of making it is usually not so great. So that's also, to me, I would say a red flag. All right, so curiosity and awe, right? It, this actually usually leads to excitement. Right, that curiosity and awe will usually get you motivated. Right, that's a great sign. Then you know you're on the right track. If you're feeling like this, you're on the right track. You want to get excited and be passionate about your work, and that curiosity, like I said, and awe really motivates that. Let's see. Uh, Counter Pasta said, "I'm very grateful for my sports background for this." Yeah, some of my favorite artists are shut-ins and secluded. Should I study drawing on the right side of the brain? Oh, that book. Uh, I think that's a good book. I think that's a good book. I agree with most of the stuff that's in there. Um, Ritunje, you said you could uh, differentiate sometimes until you have hands in the image. <laughs> Wenley, okay, so you guys are already writing back there too. Great. Simon said, yes, I am hard on myself when I see the best of the best, but it hurts. Sometimes it makes me stop for a while and come back again to continue drawing and practicing. Yeah, so for Simon, that's great that you're aware of that, you know? It's good to ask, like, well, why does it hurt me? You know, like, why does it hurt? And how do I, how do I use this? Is there a way of it motivating me? And if there's not, then just don't look at it, right? Like, just figure out, again, what your process is going to be to move yourself forward. Samantha, hyperrealism of a photograph is my least favorite art. I would agree with that for me. Redacted Mike should put some ambient nature sounds in the background <laughs> while getting his lectures. I'll do that next time. Panna boy, I feel good. Uh, I feel a good way to avoid getting stuck in copying is to do master studies and eventually pick up stylistic choices that you don't think about when you're drawing. It's interesting you say that because we do have um, students at drawingforce.com go through studying the Renaissance for a period of time in mentorship. Um, I think there's something there, you know, to learn about the tactility that they draw with and the, the level of organicness that the drawings have, right? 
And you do pick stuff up from studying, again, from studying other artists, not copying them, again, studying them. It's that why. Why is Michelangelo doing this? Why is he using these lines here, right? You, you, wanna, you want to um, investigate and interrogate, <laughs> right, the artists. Why are they doing what they're doing, right? Okay. One of you mentioned this earlier, and that is patience. Not necessarily patience in like the act of creating the drawing itself. That's like a whole other conversation, which I think we had probably over a year ago, which is like, what's the right amount of time for a drawing, right? Sometimes it's good to move fast. Sometimes it's good to move slow. Uh, but this is more, I think this comment is really in here more about the patience, you know, having patience to, um, to learn, right? You're not going to become a master in two days. It's just not going to happen. It's never happened to anybody on the face of the earth. It's not going to happen to you, right? So that's okay. Enjoy the process, <laughs> right? It's cliche, but it's true. Enjoy the process. Enjoy the fact that you're going to learn. You're going to have friction. You're going to come across challenges. You're going to enjoy defeating those challenges, right? You're going to enjoy seeing your own growth. And then someday you're going to have fun looking back at sketchbooks from 10 years you know, from now and look and go, wow, like, look at that. Look at my, look at how much I improved, right? That's just part of the human condition. Right. And so you want to go through that process and you want to enjoy that process. And it's okay to get frustrated, angry, mad, happy, sad, to go through all those different emotions, as long as they are not stopping you. Right. Again, you just don't want to stop moving forward. Okay. So I patience. Think this, I think the patience part is especially challenging. Uh, for example, for someone who wants to get to work in the entertainment industry, for example, you know, and they're like, well, I have to get good as fast as possible. And then it's easy to, to lose heart along the way because you like, again, the expectation comes in. Well, I expected that I should have been farther by now, or I expected that I should uh, have been able to make a portfolio by now. You know, so even for myself, looking back, man, I started my formal education drawing in 2004. And only now I'm mean, seeing that, okay, now I, I can say that. I'm at the level of skill that I, I always knew from the beginning that I needed to be at, you know, to work in the industry. Mm -hmm. So it, it took me that long, you know, and sometimes I remember one time someone asked me regarding mentorship, if they would be able to draw like me after 36 sessions, <laughs> I was like, dude, it, it took me 15 years to draw like that. It's not going <laughs> sure. to happen. Yeah. You know, so no, it's true. It, it's very easy to underestimate how much time and effort it takes. And that's why you should, you should not charge cheap for your artwork once you get there. You know, like remember all the sweat and tears that you went through to, to get the skills. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I mean, this is going to sound really cocky, but I'll say it anyway. Um, I've had students say this to me and I, I agree with them. I see, I, in fact, I just had a, one of my students, this guy, John, that I teach. I've been teaching for probably about a year and a half, two years now. Um, he came in with this animation of a basketball player last night. And I just thought, you know, and he's in his first year at a school called Capilano, right? So it's this animation school in Vancouver, Canada. And I helped him get in there, right? So he, he, he wasn't able to get in. He ramped up in mentorship. We got a portfolio together very quickly, right? And boom, like he got in. And now I got to go through his first year with him at the school. So he's a freshman and he comes in with this animation of this basketball player. And I remember in my senior year of college trying to animate um, like a cougar or something running. And it was God awful, it was terrible. And I just looked at this basketball thing. And I'm like, I couldn't have done this by, I would say even senior year. I couldn't do it, you know? And he said to me, he's like, well, you didn't have you to teach you. And I was like, well, that's true. <laughs> I didn't, you know, I had other teachers. So I had to go through my own process to get here. And hopefully, hopefully we're doing a better job than my teachers did in order for us to get you to these places quicker. You also have service of the internet. You know, I didn't have the internet when I was learning. It didn't exist back then, right? So you have, you know, lots of different voices and lots of different artists out there and stuff like YouTube, you know, helping you also. So I see in general, what I see is students starting college at 18, 19 years old are far more skilled than I was at 18 or 19 years old. I would say some of those students enter college where I was at like my third year of school, right? So, you know, that curve has changed, you know, and I hope that the three of us, Swami Matunjay and I, 
are able to get you guys to your goals faster, earlier, younger than we were because we had to go through all this stuff. So you can rest on our shoulders, right? To, and to get there more quickly. So maybe it took Swenley 15, 20 years, maybe it'll take you five, right? So that would be amazing, right? Amazing, right? Think of that. Think of the gift you're getting out of being educated like that and saving yourself 10 years of time, right? When the one thing we all have that's the same is time. There's no way of, you know, of controlling time, right? So we we'll hopefully, you know, help you with that. Okay, last but not least, the blue collar mentality, right? And man, I mean this with like all the love in the world. Um, what does this mean? Well, when I was teaching in New York, I remember uh, there was a guy named Mike that I that was a student, and he was from Pennsylvania, and he was from a coal miner town in Pennsylvania. And man, I just loved his work ethic, you know. And this guy Mike, by the way, has gone on to work in the entertainment industry. He's been a storyboard artist across numerous shows. Tried working on his own IP. He's been a uh, he's been a producer. I think he has an Emmy for producing some of these TV shows. I think right now he's directing some kind of Batman thing over at Warner Brothers that's animated. So he's had an amazing career, right? And I really attest that to Mike's blue collar mentality. He would always just come in, like sit down, roll up his sleeves and get to work, you know? And, and I have to admit, I didn't come from that. I'm much more in my head, you know? So I'm like thinking and feeling and <laughs> problem solving, you know, and in the end, the way you move forward is by acting, right? Like just do the damn job, right? Do the job, sit down, get your hand on the piece of paper and just do the work, right? It doesn't mean we should ignore everything we talked about today. I think it's important that there's self-awareness, you know, you need to look at your work, be aware of what you're doing, help yourself get into that blue collar mentality, right? Like sit down, roll up the sleeves and get the job done. And then be able to assess it and improve it and get it to be better and better and better. Don't get yourself mired and stuck, you know, stuck in all the emotional baggage that can come along with all this stuff, right? Kevin says, I appreciate you guys teaching us both the fast gesture and then teaching us how to clean up the drawings. Well, yeah, there's that full range, right? That full space that uh, Kevin is talking about. Okay, so let's move on to our last section and then this will lead to um, Mertunje talking of, you know, demoing what we're going to talk about here. So how do we fix all this specifically, right? We already talked a great deal about a lot of the mental stuff, but there's physical things here as well, right? So one of them we call the force experiences. And these experiences are physical actions. It's like, how are you drawing, right? What kind of line are you using? What is the physical action that you're taking to create even just line itself? And, and we're teaching line. We're teaching drawing through the act of line. Again, we're not rendering. We're not talking about how to create grayscale, right? <clears throat> Skiing is one of the metaphors that we use because the kind of line we use is very physics-based and it's very connected to something like momentum in skiing or driving, uh, riding a bicycle, right? All those things come from that space. Skating is another great example of that, right? Again, anything that is has trajectory and motion or you're covering distance over time, not to sound too much like a physics teacher, but you're covering distance over time, is a great metaphor for force. Uh, you know, surfing, right? You're going across water, you're going over distance over time, and you cut, when you cut corner, corners, you burn energy, right? So that happens in anything that has a trajectory to it. Oh, one of my favorite cars. <laughs> I came really close at one point of getting a DeLorean. I really did. <laughs> it's very... I think very focused on this car, it, you know, and it was much cheaper. I thought they would be like, you know, super, super expensive. They actually were not. And, uh, and they're really cool. And they made a stainless steel. Imagine driving around a stainless steel car. So awesome. Is that your uh, backyard? Like, yeah, exactly. This is my, my racetrack in the backyard. <laughs> exactly. So the force experiences are a great way. Um, iteration, right? Iteration. So there's soft touch, which comes out of those force experiences, experiences. So you're getting to iterate within the drawing itself, right? And focus, right? Focus on it. And then there's iteration, which is to draw and then redraw and redraw and redraw in new drawing to new drawing to new drawing. I always think of the scientists when I think of iteration, right? It's experiment, 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 right? To keep moving forward through the experimentation and narrow down the problems until you get to the solution, right? Right, so here he is, right? So here's our scientist. 
this is definitely what I think about. <laughs> this is probably what I look like too when uh, when I'm doing this. But experimentation, right? So we've got iteration. We have soft touch. You know, really the force experiences. Here's um, Rasenje talking a little bit more about soft touch and putting these images together, right? Curiosity and exploration, right? Well, let's see what else you put here. Yeah, searching and exploring. Yeah, this is a great slide. And I don't know if this was your intention, Ritunje, but what I get out of this slide is big picture and small picture, right? So the vastness of open space, was that your intention? Yeah, exactly what yeah. Uh, you're describing, yeah. Yeah, the vastness of open space, right? And, and this is kind of a perfect image because we talk about that big picture being like a map. And this girl looks like she's holding a map there, right? So it's like having a map of the big picture and then allowing yourself the indulgence of finally going in afterwards into those smaller details. Again, usually the copier will want to go for the details first, right? Instead of understanding the why like and the what's going on here, right? They'll want to get mired in nuance and detail. And that's, again, that's going down the tunnel too fast and getting in the trap, right? So yeah, that's a great slide. <laughs> this one's a little more of a stretch though. <laughs> a yeah, bright was, orange uh... teddy bear. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to bring in like a joke, you know, so people can remember it, but this is not the yeah. actual soft touch, but uh, right. it is more of that exploring thing, you know. Okay, so that was it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I will, I will never forget it now. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to pass this over to Mertunje. He's just going to demo for, for us for the next like five, 10 minutes. Um, the rest of us, uh, Swanley and I, will obviously keep answering questions or thoughts you might have in the chat. So Mertunje, I hand it to you, um, you know, take over whenever you want to just demo some of the ideas we talked about. So much of this is mental guys, but you know, mind and body are connected, right? So often your way out is not just the mental piece, it's also the physical, like what can you physically do to help yourself get in the zone, throw on that blue collar uniform. I have a Sears shirt, because I used to be a Sears employee and like I used to work at what well, was called customer pickup. So people would come buy something in the store and they give me the receipt and I have to go get it in the warehouse. And I still have my shirt, right? So it's, and it still fits me, which is <laughs> kind of funny, but that's a fun thing to put on, right? It's like, well, I'm going to work. Let me put on my uniform, right? My uniforms, blue collar job, my uniform and just work, right? Instead of all of the therapy stuff that also can come along with it, right? So. Both of those things are huge, great tools that we've shared with you today is the psychology side of things, the awareness of things, right? But you also don't wanna get mired in that stuff. You also wanna just sit down and do the work, right? You gotta take action to move forward. Okay. All right. Let's uh, try to like convert all those things into practical, uh, I mean, uh, and there's like, like how to mm -hmm. actually put that into the drawing, right? So, uh, you know, you know, I cannot like bring in like every idea, but just like we are trying to like bring it together. And for example, you see this, uh, this picture here. Now I'm going to call it picture. Okay. <laughs> then, you know, like all of your internal dialogue starts and you uh, like, uh, you start to like apply all these things basically. Now, uh, now it depends, right? You call it a reference or you call it a, let's say a picture. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to call it reference because I'm, gonna, I'm just going to refer to it. Okay. Whenever I do see a picture, I always, always bring this up. You know, I remember my first conversation with Mike in, um, no, back in like 20, 2017, 2018, you know, and uh, we were talking about, and he asked me this question is like, what do you think? Like, why you're so fearless? And I just answer him the same thing, which I'm going to say it right now, uh, which is, uh, it's just a drawing for me. Okay. <laughs> it's, uh, you're not like, you're not risking anything. You're not risking your life. You know, let's say for like adventure sports, uh, you know, you're going to risk something. Okay. So, well, I'm, I'm just going to talk. I'm just going to go for it. Right. Uh, so while, while you're like uh, doing an adventure sports, you're like risking something, right. You're, you're risking, uh, your health or something like that. Right. Uh, you, you can get injured. Okay. Basically. But, uh, guess what, you know, here you're gonna like lose something. Uh, you're not gonna get, uh, like, like you're failing you're not losing anything okay you're not losing an arm basically okay so uh just think of this is this way uh, and it gives me a lot of, lot of uh, confidence right internal dialogues uh basically definitely you want to have in control uh, you know uh, i i always bring in this thing that uh, only one thing can live in your mind right it's it's either going to be like the fear or it's either going to be the confidence right it cannot like happen like 50 50 or something like that okay 
So it's not like half the time you're getting fear and I have the time you're getting confidence. And uh, how I'm how I'm like uh, throwing it out of my mind basically is like I am always being curious. Okay, just being curious, uh, squelch away like all that all that fear out of my mind. It's because oh you no, know, for example, in this figure, I was like look how he's pushing right um how, how he's like pushing there so I'm, I'm actually curious about is like oh how that balance is created and how this figure is actually working so like using like all those tricks basically i'm i'm just um doing it and when it once it becomes a habit basically you don't need to like uh effort you have to like put it the effort to actually think about all of this intentionally it will just be like more effortlessly or it's it's like a habit you know that you're building basically okay so uh, again, you know, while I was talking, see, I was like drawing it, and uh, and, and that's this is another example, by the way. I'm talking right now. I'm not like uh, trying to like create a hyper real <laughs> photograph out of it. I'm just like saying, oh, look at the energy into the arm. Look at the energy into the hand right there. Okay, so it's something like this. And uh, let's say I, uh, you know, let's say I'm doing this or something, and I made a mistake. I was like, oh, you know, the pelvis is now out of the drawing. See, my hands are safe. My body is safe. Did I lose anything? No, right? <laughs> they can do the same thing, right? If you, if you like need a, need like a good inspiration, it's like, okay, you know, I have to like make it perfect and make it like perfect, okay? I always uh, also bring in the idea of like quality versus the quantity, by the way, right? In the beginning, you don't want to focus on the, uh, the quality side of things, which is, uh, which actually brings me to the thought of, um, like fail faster, learn quicker, okay? This is uh, obviously the same thing, right? You're doing more drawings, you're failing faster, so you're learning like more, okay? Instead of like, say, when you're perfecting one drawing, okay? So for example, let's say uh, I'm intentionally making this this one, let's say bigger, okay? I'd say right here, I'm making this like, like very bigger, and this one, uh, this one also, let's say very bigger, okay? Something like this. And I was like, hmm, you know, should I just erase it, you know? Or should I just like try, try to perfect it? Should I just like undo it, right? <laughs> All this like, ah, you know, like I made a mistake. But, uh, you know, the thing is you can just go for another iteration. And in this way, maybe you're you're doing it better. Maybe the push that you've given the body in the torso in this case, maybe that's better, okay? Maybe that's better in, than this one. So instead of just like doing that, I always say, well, like go for the next one. Now, the digital drawing has like come in and you know it 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 even saves you a lot of resources right <laughs> now you're not losing any papers or something like that you can just take the you can just turn off the layers you can you can draw another you can draw another layer you're not even losing uh anything uh you know even even before you're not losing anything in traditional you just might be losing like a paper or so but here uh, you're not losing anything at all right it's just uh, like a few layers you know that you've been going through and that's it Okay. Uh, so, you know, I hope, uh, hope you guys find that useful and I'm just gonna just quickly gonna draw it. Uh, you can bring it to like more perfection, more hyper real, by the way. And we, we did a stream, you know, so ironically we did a stream like two, two, three weeks ago about like this, uh, detail and like how to draw or clean up, you know, force drawing or something like that. So you can see like, uh, you can, uh, be on the same step. You can be as, uh, like this, this kind of drawings like comes from your like curious minds. Okay, like curious minds, you've been exploring. Uh, I've been I've been trying to like put in the soft touch uh, thing as well. So uh, the so talking about like the you know like the practical things, you know more like technical things. Sorry, uh, you can do like soft touching in here. I'm doing it. Basically, it gives me like an exploration stage. You can see how uh, big of a brush I'm using. I'm using like. A brush this big which i which can actually do this if i'm putting more pressure to it okay but i'm but i'm doing the soft touch which helps me like explore more okay not to like go onto the details and focusing on the big picture okay and so on and so on so uh just to bring that together now okay first of all just be curious okay i mean uh try to have fun we are not like uh we are not trying to create stress for you guys you know and say okay no not for it's not just for like the mentees or for like you guys just watching the stream. We're not trying to create a stress out of the drawing, right? We are just like doing the opposite. We are uh, we are actually trying for you guys to like have fun within the drawing, okay? And, uh, and the first thing is again, just, uh, you know, don't take any tension, right? <laughs> uh, 
be patient, right? It's going to take a lot of time. We are just telling it right now, straight away. Every, every, every artist is going to tell you this, right? It's going to take a lot of time. So stop worrying about being perfection. Uh, I, I was reading, I thought about, I was like reading Salvador Dali's uh, biography, you know, last night. And uh, one thing again, you know, which I was using in the, in the mentorship a lot, basically, and I was on the stream here, which is, he said, uh, don't worry about being perfect because you will never be one. Okay. So yeah, that I, I think it like brings us uh, together. All right. You know, so yeah, you know, don't worry about it. You can take this like same drawing. Uh, you can convert that to as like hyper real as you want, or you can take it to the more stylized way you want to, whether you can, whatever you want out of it. Okay. All right. You know, so yeah, so hopefully, you know, we enjoyed the stream. We're going to conclude it. Um, yeah, hope you enjoyed the small demo. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mertunje. So um, I want to close with the goal here is not to be perfect. The goal is to learn, right? And if you want to get to your goal, the goal is to learn, right? Not about trying to be a perfectionist. The way you get better at something is by learning how to do it. And by learning how to do it is by failing and failing a lot, right? We've all heard this, but that is the truth of the matter. And it's easy to talk about versus emotionally going through that, right? So you have to get good at being okay with knowing something goes wrong. That's where the learning is. When something goes right, there's nothing to learn, right? So, so you wanna capitalize on when things go wrong and the way you learn is by recognizing that something went wrong and figuring out how to change that, right? That's where the learning happens is how do I change that from wrong to right? How do I improve this, right? So like I said, don't focus on the end, focus on the process, go through fail early and fail fast. Um, and before you know it, you'll be there and then it'll stink because you're there and the fun is all actually behind you, <laughs> which was the challenge of getting there in the first place, all right? So um, that's it. That's all we have for you guys uh, this week. I hope that you enjoyed today's Force Friday. We will see you all next Friday. Uh, thanks for, uh, like I said, joining us. Uh, thank you, Mutunje and Swenley, uh, for helping create the slides and the information for today. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll, uh, we'll see you next Friday. I'll see you guys, and I'll see Swenley and Mutunje. I'll see you guys next Friday as well. All right. Bye, guys. Yes. Right. See you guys. Take care, everyone. Again. See ya. Yeah. Have a good weekend, everyone. Bye bye. Okay, we're out. That was good. We had a pretty good...